Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today's chapter is about consumer choices. And when we talk about consumer, we talk about buyers. And buyers they try to maximize, maximize satisfaction. We will see in the future there is another chapter called, you know, business firm cost, you know, okay. Businesses are trying to maximize profit. Okay, or minimize cost but this chapter is about consumer how consumer make choice okay and those are the learning objective here why demand curve are downward sloping we know that you know in chapter uh, 3 the demand curve has a negative slope when the price goes down then quantity increase so we will see another explanation of this negative slope. Okay. We also will see the nature and source of consumer surplus. What is consumer surplus? Okay. And the meaning and use of price discrimination. When we talk about consumer surplus, it's basically, you know, if you go to the store, you know, you have a willingness to pay. You already have an idea of how much you want to spend. Then when you get to the store, and then you spend, you know, there is a discount. Assume that you want to spend 200 on, um, you know, a piece of t-shirt, and then you realize that oh, it costs 100 because there is a discount. So 200 minus 100, that's your consumer surplus. Okay, and then here we're gonna see a lot of a lot of you know price discrimination okay how business can you know set up price for each consumer MBTA okay this is some type of price discrimination you have price for younger people price for student price for older people those are price discrimination okay and then the last one is how consumer maximize satisfaction utility we call it okay you can call it sat satisfaction you want to have fun as a you know buyers or consumers you want more money to have more fun so in this case we talk about maximizing utility so consumer choices price are important in determining consumer behavior okay so if the price are too high, people won't buy. If the price are low, you know, people want to buy more. So and price allow consumer to make choices between good, okay? Just to make sure that hey, the price are right. And then, you know, as a business, you also want to make sure that you price your goods correctly. <laughs> so that, you know, um people can buy and and also it helps you as a business to maximize your profit so you want to make sure that the price are correct okay because if price is too high so nobody's gonna buy if your price is too low then you're gonna lose money so you have to figure it out a way as a business to set up the correct price and so in this chapter we'll look at how the price affect consumers decision because depend on the price as a consumer you are going to make choices okay how do we decide how much of a good to buy and why do we feel so good about our purchases you know uh you know if you buy a nice house you say oh yeah you enjoy the house you have to enjoy what you buy otherwise what is the point of buying okay so when you buy something and you enjoy it then you feel good now if you want if we want to attach a number to your enjoyment then we will call it utility and and we will see that you know. and why do we buy certain product but not others you know because of the price okay now there is a lot of theories out there okay very theory called psycho you know socio psychiatric theory man this is a long word okay 
why people desire certain goods and services. Now, economists are interested into what people actually purchase. Okay, so they are not interested to oh, what people want to buy, what people are buying. So that's the key here. Okay, so you know to buy good, what you know you must be willing and able to buy. Okay, if you don't want to buy something you're not gonna buy it now even if you want to buy it and you don't have the money well you go home okay so you have to be willing and able okay and price and income are just relevant as uh, basic desire and preference okay you need income to buy and your income should allow you to be able to afford could are there because there are prices are there if you want to buy a house you need income houses has have prices and you need income to be able to buy those so income always come into play okay you want to buy a house you need to go to the bank and the bank will ask you a lot of questions your income you know, how many years have you been working and so on this so okay so and there are a couple of factors we saw in chapter three supply and demand okay we saw that there is a there are factors which can determine the shift of the demand curve okay those are this income expectation the price price of other goods okay these elements here can determine the shift of the demand okay if people make more income they're gonna buy more okay or if people expect the price to go down then they're not gonna buy now they're gonna wait when the price goes down so these elements here will shift the demand curve to the right or to the left okay now if the price of the good is changing then you move in along so that's basically a little bit of a difference between change in demand where the demand curve is shifting and change in quantity demanded okay so so those factors we will see those later and now we dive a little bit okay utility theory because it's related to your satisfaction if you consume a good then there are you there is some satisfaction you derive from consuming a good so you know eat a pizza go see a movie you know those are when you do that you feel happy your happiness is your satisfaction you can quantify it by putting numbers okay so the higher the price we are willing to pay the more you enjoy it means that if you are willing to pay high, higher price so it means that the enjoyment is also higher okay so all good are there once you consume them then you derive some satisfaction and we can call it utility or satisfaction so that's the whole theory now if you go to master level PhD level you will see the same chapter the same chapter out there okay but with a lot of mathematical because it's about maximization problem in economy and that's the same thing in mathematical engineering you maximize something under a constraint in economy you know consumer want to maximize their satisfaction under a constraint called budget constraint so you can have a maximization problem a mathematical function you try to maximize which is your satisfaction depending on how many goods you're consuming under a constraint okay so that's the utility theory and the maximization problem so utility is the pleasure or satisfaction you're getting okay from consuming a good now consuming doesn't mean that you only eat it okay you know yeah you know literally you know 
you can eat a pizza you can drink some you know water or you can go to the club and have fun and do some drink yeah you derive satisfaction but you can also you know go to the beach and or buy a house or whatever and then you enjoy this okay so the total utility here is if you sum up assume that you eat one pizza you say oh I feel good and then you eat another one and say oh good I'm I'm feeling better now if you continue eating 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 if you sum up those utility you have a total utility here okay so so it's the total satisfaction you're getting from consuming all these good okay now the marginal is additional it means that is the satisfaction you're getting from consuming one unit one more okay if you have one pizza you eat it and then you're happy it gives you a certain utility now if you consume one more slice of pizza then what is the contribution of the additional the first one is one utility the second one is another one you know when you break it down those are what they call the marginal utility it means that the utility coming from the additional good you consuming okay now when you keep consuming things consuming thing then your satisfaction is going down because you're getting full and full and full so what is the point so automatically your enjoyment is going down and that's what they call the law of diminishing marginal utility it means that your satisfaction is going down okay so the marginal utility of a good decrease as more of it is consumed the more you consume then you know the less satisfaction you get it you go to the club you dance you drink you say yeah 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 and then you keep drinking drinking then at a certain point they're gonna drag you out okay or if you you know you thirsty and then you drink some water so you feel happy now if you keep drinking you know more cup of water you know um, the marginal is going down okay so the satisfaction received from the next slice of pizza is less than the satisfaction received from the previous one okay because you full now so you really don't care about the next one so you're not gonna pay the full price for the next one so that's why you know your marginal is going down and automatically the price you're willing to pay is going down because you say oh what is the point okay so additional quantity of a good yield smaller and smaller increment of satisfaction here okay so you can do this exercise so in one sitting how many slices of pizza at one dollars each you will probably eat so will you stop after that number now if you have to pay two dollars will you stop earlier or later <laughs> because now the cost is higher okay so you have to compare the benefits the satisfaction you're getting and the cost cost and benefit okay it won't make sense to continue eating and your marginal going down and it's lower than the price okay but if it's free then you can keep eating forever okay so that's what this exercise is about now this is kind of an application here okay the total utility here you see the total utility here is increasing because you consume one one bag of popcorn you got 20 now you consume two the total is 35 you consume three is 44 four is 49 five is 50 so you see the total is increasing that's what we call the total utility now 
what you also want is the marginal utility you want to see what is the contribution of each unit here how much satisfaction the first one is giving you the first one is giving you 20 because it's the first one okay so that's why the marginal is 20 here the second one is giving you what 35 minus 20 it means that what is the contribution of the second one is 35 minus 20 so it's going to give you 15 how about the third one the third one the total is 44 it means that when you sum up all of this it gives you 44 but we want to know what is the contribution of the third unit the marginal so which is 44 minus 35 is give you 9 and then so on the next one 49 minus 44 is give you 5 and then 50 minus 49 is give you 1 so basically your total is increasing but at a decreasing rate the decreasing rate is shown by the diminishing marginal utility here so if you want to apply math here you know the first derivative which is basically your marginal utility from here to 50 is positive okay that's why it's increasing here now it's increasing at a decreasing rate so it's going down so if you compute the second derivative basically if you do 15 minus 20 it's going to be negative because it's going down so it's increasing at a decreasing rate okay now here you maximize because that's the maximum the slope here is zero this means that the first derivative here is zero so you maximize where the marginal utility is zero here okay so that's the whole thing here you maximize where the marginal utility is zero okay and that's the explanation as long as the marginal utility is zero then it means that as long as you are here you keep going okay and you stop when your marginal utility is zero that's where you maximize so your total utility is maximized here when this guy is you know less than zero or just you know negative okay here zero okay so the more marginal utility a product deliver so the more you're willing to pay okay if your satisfaction you're getting from consuming more and more you know then you you can keep paying more okay but if the marginal utility is going down you don't really don't want to pay for i say ah yeah yeah i'm not getting i'm getting less satisfaction so what is the point of me paying more i just want to pay less okay so that's what this thing saying. As marginal utility diminish, so we'll buy additional quantity only if the price decrease. Okay? Because you're getting less satisfaction, you're not gonna pay the same price. You know, if you eat a pizza, the first pizza you're hungry, you wanna pay the full price. But the second pizza you say, listen, I'm you know, I'm full. Okay, I'm not interested, but if you want to give it to me, you have to cut the price down. So that's what this thing is saying. Okay. And it's kind of related to the law of demand, and we will see how the marginal utility is related to the demand curve. Okay. And we already know the law of demand saying that you know when the price change, the quantity change in opposite direction. So that's why the slope is negative. Okay. Ceteris paribus, it means that assume that you maintain other things constant, you're looking at the price and the quantity, and that's what is here. You know, price and quantity, all other elements are maintained constant. What you care about is price and quantity, that's the law of demand. Now, let's see how marginal utility play here, okay? We saw that the marginal utility is going down. What does this mean? It's going down because the satisfaction you're getting is going down. Therefore, you are you are not willing to pay a high price. You know, you consume more. The price going down because the marginal 
utility is going down the willingness to pay diminish along with the marginal utility okay so to really justify buying more the price has to be lower you know like a, you know if you want me to cons to buy more pizza you gotta cut the price man so if uh, the price is 0 0.25 here then you buy this one 12 okay and at 0 0.15 you buy more okay so yeah i can buy more if you cut the price down because i'm not interested okay so that's what f and h here at f the price is 0 0.25 you buy 12 at h the price is 15 0 0.15 and you buy more okay so that show a little bit you know the diminishing marginal utility and your willingness to pay to, to buy more if the price goes down so that kind of show you a little bit how the diminishing marginal utility is kind of related to the law of demand okay the law of demand says that i will buy more the more you know the price goes down the quantity increase okay so you want me to buy more then the price has to go down and if you want to look at the market demand is just the summation of the individual demand okay so if you have john has his own demand alicia you know draman omar then you have to sum up those individual demand that is the market the market is the total demand okay so it's the collective willingness and ability to pay not just one person here okay so that's the market demand now consumer surplus like i told you is you know what benefit are you getting when you have the willingness to pay and then the price you pay so assume that you go to the store and you have already the price in your mind you say you know what i really really like this uh those shoes and i really really want to spend 200 dollars this is what you're willing to pay okay but when you go to the store and then they say you we have a discount you know instead of 200 you pay 100 then the difference is 100 dollars 200 minus 100 okay you willing to pay 200 but you realize that the the real price is hundred dollars okay so a person higher up on the demand curve is willing to pay a lot and then the person lower you know is willing to pay you know uh, low price okay so the demand curve represent what each potential buyers is willing to pay that's what this thing is saying and we're gonna see the graph okay so the consumer surplus is the difference between what you're willing to pay your maximum to pay and what you actually pay and that's why a lot of people prefer selling their stuff on ebay because when you sell sell on ebay well if i really 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 like it i will you know, try to you know show the price i'm you know the i will show how much i'm willing to pay because i really want it and that's the same situation with a lot of you know the housing right now where you know the price are going up and then people kind of you know try to increase what they're willing to pay okay. so consumer surplus is just the difference okay what you're willing to pay and what you actually pay so if uh, what you actually pay is lower then you you know it's good so if a person's maximum price exceeds the market price then you have a benefit okay um but if it's less then you're not gonna buy it so that's what this thing say now and example is here you have fred michael Ua, and carlos so fred here fred fred is willing to pay one million dollars now assume that this is the price of you know the house okay 
800, especially in Massachusetts. You know, Massachusetts is a very expensive state compared to Georgia and Texas. So the, the price of housing are really higher here. Okay. Now, assume that the price costs $845,500. Now, Fred is willing to pay $1 million. So $1 million minus 845, you have 150 for 500. So this one here is Fred willingness to pay, okay? No. Fred willingness to pay 1 million, 1 million minus 845. So this one is Fred surplus here. It's like benefit, okay? Now Michael is ready to pay 950. So when you take 950 minus 845, you get 105, 500. So this is the consumer surplus of Michael. Okay. It's Michael. See Michael? Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And who are is ready to pay 900? So 900 minus 845 is 54. And then Carlos, Carlos want to pay this, you know, what the price is. So Carlos want to pay 8. 845,500 so basically there is no profit you know there is no surplus here now John Marty and Bob Blaze they pretty much the willingness to pay is lower than the price so they're not gonna pay okay and uh, and this one show you the consumer surplus okay the green area okay it's the trade you know the the gain you know you make or consumer makes so that's what is consumer surplus here it's green okay usually you can compute it mathematically by taking this one multiply by this one divided by two you can get the total consumer surplus here okay now in, in this case here we talk about cars okay you know you can apply to house so the cars move from the seller to the buyer who value them more okay so it means that if you are ready to pay top dollars then you get the product and that's the same thing which is going on with the housing uh, market house market now you know people who are able you know to pay the top dollars so they you know they get the house okay so that's what is here so the consumer surplus is just the difference between what you your willingness to pay and what you actually pay okay and then another element is price discrimination now the price discrimination is just basically mean that you know setting up price for each uh, customer okay so and an example is MBTA. MBTA is uh, the public transportation in Massachusetts. So there is a price for young, price for student, price for older people. You know, so there are some different price system, especially MBTA being a monopoly. Okay, but you know, business will love do that if they can know your willingness to pay okay so price discrimination is the sale of good at different price to different consumer okay so if a consumer you know in the case of MBTA then uh, you know they want to make it easy okay but uh, sometimes especially if you don't have a public you know if it's not a public firm if it's a private well they try to maximize the profit so they try to take all of your little surplus what they call the consumer surplus basically they try to charge you your willingness to pay if they can know your willingness to pay and that's where the problem is now, if you are a smart consumer, then you will do your research before going to buy, okay? So, but if the seller could charge you the maximum price each potential customer is willing to pay, they will do that. 
because if I know that you're willing to pay $20 and then the good cost 10 I'm going to charge you $20 because that's what you're willing to pay. But you're not going to reveal this as a buyer. You're not. You're trying to hide it. You know. And you can see this a lot in other country. You know, if you are an American and, you, and then you go buy some stuff in Africa or other country, usually there is no price on the code. You need to ask the sellers what is the price and then the seller will look at you and say oh you look like an American okay 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 that's cool I'm gonna charge you an American price <laughs> they're not gonna tell you if they're gonna charge you an, an American price but that's what they will try to do and especially when you start talking and when they know that you have an accent then they will start to start figuring out where you from are you from Europe are you from America or whatever then if they know that they will know that you really don't know the real price okay so that's where you know they can charge you a higher price than what the than the real price so but price discrimination is to be able to charge customer what they're willing to pay so that you can you know make as much money as you can as a business okay Basically, you try to take everything from the consumer, but consumer they're also smart, so they they're doing their research out there. So, so and that's why it's a little bit hard for business to be able, because the consumer will look at different products they go online before going to, you know, to buy. Okay, so basically, how to price. You know, you know how price discrimination work. You separate customer and deal with them individually. That's the whole point. Okay. Then, if you can discover their willingness to pay, then you can charge them these things. But sometimes it's not easy. Okay. Now it works if customer don't have the perfect information. Okay. You know that's why as a customer you need to do your homework make sure that you know um, you're not going to be charged a certain price okay so uh, you have some shopping trip usually select from several goods so here we're going to talk about how do you choose good okay because you want to be able to maximize your satisfaction as a consumer therefore you need to make sure that you choose your good you know nicely in a way where you can have you know a lot of utility or satisfaction so that's the whole point here okay now to be able to compare good you need some basic rules okay and one of the rules here in economy is what we call the marginal utility divided by price because if you have different goods with different prices it's really difficult to compare them you can because if one good called five dollars the other cool good costs one dollars and then the other one costs seven dollars you really can compare them the only way you can compare them is to bring them to the same unit in terms of monetary one dollars okay so that's why you know if you want to buy a piece of shirt so you will look at what is the satisfaction you getting from this piece of shirt and then you divide by the price so that you can get the marginal utility per dollars and then you look at the second product and then you divide by its price and then so on therefore you can look at the marginal utility per dollar for each good and you can compare them that's that's basically what this thing is doing the marginal utility divided by price in economy we call it the marginal utility per dollars okay so when you do that then you want to make sure that, I mean you know you don't want 
your marginal the marginal utility you're getting be lower than the price you pay cost and benefit okay so that's why they say it must be greater than one okay to be considered okay so now when you do that you can start selecting okay so you can select the good with the highest marginal utility per dollars and so on and so on and so on then you can compare because it's one dollar one dollar one dollar one dollar so you can compare which one has the highest utility and then so on so on okay and then you keep doing that until a certain point where the marginal utility per dollars is equal for all good that's where you maximize your utility here so the marginal utility per dollars is the same that's what this rule is saying okay so this rule is saying if this is one good and this is another good if this is t-shirt and this is pant so you can have many goods here okay you can have x y z and so on okay so how do you maximize is where the marginal utility per dollars is equal okay that's where is the optimal consumption here okay so but what really happened in practice in practice before you go to the store when you get your money you just don't go out there and then start buying no you don't do that you make a list okay you say okay I'm gonna pay the rent first and then I'm gonna pay this 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 and then uh, those those are you know I'm gonna pay the rest you know this and what this one and this one you rank it okay sometimes when you go to the store you have a piece of paper and then you cannot put what you really need to buy okay so so implicitly you are doing the marginal utility per dollar because you put on top the marginal utility the highest marginal utility for one dollar and then so on and so on okay and in general the first good you put is be, it means that that one give you the highest utility so you put rent you you need to you know to have a house mortgage or rent okay and then so on and so on so 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 that's how you basically do and that's how it's related to marginal utility per dollars okay so if you are familiar with good being considered you have a good idea of a diminishing marginal utility of each and what you might be willing to pay okay so so then you have a marginal utility going down to you know from the highest to the lowest and so on okay and then you just do trial by error okay you adjust your behavior as especially in practice okay so so this is just you know a couple of you know additional element advertising and promotion help you know consumer increase the marginal okay utility it means that you know if you see a lot of advertising on TV oh you gotta buy this big screen TV you say oh I need to buy this big screen TV so so it's kind of increase your demand okay and you know and also all those advertising and so on there's a little you know they use a little bit of socio psychiatric technique you know and ego pride insecurity good love so but a lot of things involved here you know and here because for an advertising campaign to be successful it means that it has to push people to buy more okay because when you advertise your good and then a lot of people start buying then the demand shifts here so that's what this thing is and we saw in chapter 3 shift of the demand it means that you know it's something changing other than the price okay you know the price is fixed but something else the price is fixed here but something else is pushing customer to buy you know those advertising campaign and so on okay 
and that's the same things here so and we also saw the downward sloping which is linked to you know marginal utility going down and customers has a maximum price he or she will pay for a good and this show you where the customer is we saw you know with you know uh, John and I don't know uh, Michael and so on they were up because the willingness to pay was higher and then people has a lower willingness to pay their down okay so so and we also saw diminishing marginal utility here is kind of related to the law of demand because you know when you consume a good your utility is going down and uh, because your utility is going down so your willingness to pay is also lower because if I'm eating pizza and then you keep giving me pizza I'm not gonna pay the same price I say hey I don't need it okay if you want me to pay for it then the price has to be lower okay so that's kind of related to the downward sloping and uh, we also saw the consumer surplus here this is you know consumer surplus is the difference between what you are willing to pay and what you actually pay so that difference is the consumer surplus assume that you know you want to buy a laptop and you want to spend uh, 500 on the laptop you already know what type of laptop laptop you trying to buy 500 is in your head and that's what you have you know then when you show up at Best Buy and then you know the manager say hey we have a discount okay uh, it's cost now $300 you wanted to pay 500 you pay 300 the difference is 200 that is your consumer surplus okay and that's what this thing is saying here so discriminate so price discrimination uh, I mean business they really really want to know what is your maximum to pay what is your willingness to pay but it's very hard okay if business can know these things then they will charge you individual price okay so that they can take your consumer surplus they want to take everything okay but if you are a smart consumer you will do your homework and make sure that you really really know you know the real price out there okay so but price discrimination it means that charging each consumer their willingness to pay so that the consumer surplus is zero okay and then we also saw that you know if you have to make choices between different good you really need to be able to compare those goods but if the goods have different prices you have to bring everything to one dollars to do that you have to compute the marginal utility per dollars this ratio and then you compare and then the, the highest one you select you select it first and then and so on and so on now where do you have to stop you stop where the marginal utility per dollars is the same it's equal at that point you maximize so that's the you know uh, maximization criteria where the max the marginal marginal utility per dollars is the same okay so that's close consumer utility okay the next chapter is elasticity is kind of uh, it's Kind of related to consumer it means that how sensitive you are to the price okay so we're gonna see you know uh, the price elasticity of demand cross price elasticity income elasticity and supply okay thank you very much my friend and see you for the next chapter